Hello and welcome to today's video. Surprise, surprise, we're talking about probiotics again. So I've got this really interesting rule of thumb that I want to share with you. I've witnessed this myself and I've witnessed this in hundreds of my clients. And this is a really cool thing that you can see that is going to help you understand what probiotics are going to do for you. So the general rule of thumb is whatever probiotics make worse, they make better. Now let me break that down for you. So when you take a probiotic, it's probably going to give you some symptoms. It's probably going to make you have a flare up of some kind. It's going to do something, right? You're going to experience something. There's a, there's a lucky few that are in a, a better state of health that take probiotics and they just feel good. And if you're one of those people, there's probably a lot of people watching this video that envy you, but good for you. That's a really good thing. That's how it's supposed to be. You're supposed to take probiotics and just feel better. But for, for most of us living in the, in the modern world, and probably if you're watching my video, like with a chronic disease or, or two or three or 10, <laughs> you, you're probably going to take a probiotic and it's going to give you symptoms. And whatever symptoms it gives you are, again, general rule of thumb, likely the symptoms that you're going to fix if you can get that dose high enough by gently working it up slowly over time. So you don't ever want to be taking a probiotic at such a high dose that it makes your life unbearable. You don't want your quality of life to plummet below uh, like, a, 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 like a bare minimum, like an acceptable level. You need to make sure that it's good enough. Like you can, you can get through the day and be like, today is still okay. And you, you do this by, by titrating your dose up really, really slowly. If you haven't seen my video called The Goldilocks Zone, go and check that out. You can go on YouTube and type William Dickinson, The Goldilocks Zone. It helps you dose your probiotics so that you stay in your optimal dose, so that you are moving towards healing, but not giving yourself like unnecessary symptoms. Or actually, if you make your symptoms too bad, you're actually going against healing. You're actually hurting yourself. You're slowing your progress, which I obviously don't want you to be doing. So... So why why is it? Why is it this, that this general rule of thumb exists? And, and how did I discover it? So I took probiotics initially, and it gave me a bunch of symptoms that were really, really awful. They really sucked. So for me, I would get more bloating and gas. I would get a like an exacerbation of a of a, like a gastritis -y kind of burning sensation in my stomach. In on the extreme, it would even like go into reflux. Um, I would get like flare-ups of autoimmune conditions. So like uh, Shodden's syndrome, which is like a uh, an autoimmune disease where your body is attacking the mucus secreting cells in your body. So if this is you, like it might exacerbate constipation. You might get really dry eyes or a dry mouth. And you don't have to have all of them. You just have to have one of them. Like everybody's different based on their, on their genetics and what current gut bugs they've got going on right now. So you can never really, you can never really tell what it's going to be. But you get... A flare up of the symptoms that you have. So th those were mine. I'd also get like maybe some people get some skin problems. I would generally get like really low energy. That's a really common one. You know, some people get cold and flu like symptoms. This is probably you if you've got a weak immune system. It's really likely that it will trigger a, like a almost like a mini cold or like a mini flu. That can happen as well. And if it's doing this, if if you take the probiotic and it makes you feel bad in these ways. It's actually solving this problem for you. And I'm going to explain that, that, that to you now. So when you take a probiotic, it's not the probiotic itself that's causing these symptoms for you. The probiotics, especially if you're using probiotics that... These are, these are basically probiotic organisms that we've evolved alongside. Like these are organisms that are supposed to be in our gut. It doesn't make sense for these organisms that are supposed to be inside of us to give us symptoms. It just doesn't make any sense. And... It doesn't make sense, and that's because it doesn't make sense. So it's not actually the probiotics themselves that cause these symptoms. What's happening is when you throw these probiotics into your gut, you already have a pre-existing flora. So you already have organisms that are present in your digestive system. And these are the, the, the organisms that are currently perpetuating your disease state. These are the ones that are causing these lower levels of symptoms on a chronic basis. So this can be insomnia, this can be histamine intolerance, this can be food sensitivities and intolerances, this can be, um, this can be li literally almost anything, like 98% of diseases that are connected to like your gut and, 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 and leaky gut and this, this kind of whole thing, like the list is almost endless. You've got chronic fatigue syndrome, you've got cardiovascular disease, you've got 
um, liver problems and gallstones. You've, you've, you, honestly, the list is is insanely long, and it makes sense because your gut is the root of your. It's like the root of your tree, and if you've got a diseased root, then the whole rest of the tree will be unhealthy. So if your gut isn't working, it has a negative impact everywhere everywhere else. So if we can start shifting these bugs out in the long run you're going to heal like it's these bugs that are already in your gut that are causing the, the disease symptoms that you have so we need to move them out the thing is they don't want to go anywhere they want to stay there like your digestive system the human digestive system is the best real estate for microbes on the like the whole planet like you've got cow's intestines like human inte like just generally intestines are the best place for bugs to live because it's warm it's wet there's always food and they love it. It's the best place to live. So they don't want to go. They're going to put up a fight. And when you try to shift them out by taking a probiotic, they're going to produce more of the compounds, more of the toxins. And you can even have like biofilms and you can have these organisms, but they're dead. Like these are storehouses of toxicity. This can be like certain toxins that are produced in your gut, but this can also be other bioaccumulated things like mycotoxins, like metals, like plastics, estrogen. Like there's so many different things that it could be. And when we take a probiotic, we, we like shake up this whole nest. And this is good because we need to shake it up to clear it out. Like we need to disturb it to get, to get it out of your body. That's what health is going to be. But when you shake it up in the short term, it makes it worse. Think about removing a wasp's nest, you know. The wasps being there is bad because they're like occasionally stinging you or your kids or your pets. Like they're annoying. They have to go. But you try to remove them. They go crazy. They sting everything. They go They go insane. They don't like it. They want to live there. That's their home. So they're not going to go without a fight. And the same is true in your gut. So what we have to do is do it gently. Do it slowly. Do it in a, in a way where your body can handle this additional stream of toxicity that's being produced. So when these bugs are protesting and they're producing all their toxins, it's still within your level of tolerance. So if this is your threshold for symptoms... And you're kind of living here. You're living just in this controlled zone. You take a probiotic. If you take enough probiotic that it puts you over this limit, that's bad. Now you feel really, really awful. And the symptoms that you're experiencing here are actually the symptoms that probiotics are going to solve. But you're not going to solve it by holding this dose here. What we really want to do is hold this dose just here. Just under your level of tolerance. And what you'll notice is a very small exacerbation of your symptoms. So maybe a, a little bit more burning in your stomach, maybe a little bit extra gas, maybe you feel a bit like achy in your joints or it flares up arthritis or you get a little bit of a skin breakout, but m mild, like minor, very, very small, manageable, almost not negatively affecting quality of life. That's the sweet spot. If you go more than that, you're not helping yourself. You're not healing faster. We need to break this paradigm of like, I'm suffering, which means it's working. Like, I don't like it, it doesn't help. Stop fighting your body, your body's smart. It knows how to heal itself. So work with it instead of forcing it. So if you're doing these things, like you're taking probiotics or you're doing something else and you feel like shit, like you feel really, really bad, please stop doing it. You're not actually helping yourself. Your, your sweet spot is just within that zone of tolerance so that your life isn't unbearable. You're making progress at the fastest pace that your body is able to. You know, Sprinkle some of this compassion in because your body has a lot going on. And when you force it to do things that it, it doesn't prioritize or it doesn't want to do, you're actually pulling it away from that essence of healing because it knows how to fix itself. So what we're doing is we're working with your body. We're sprinkling on this little dose, this little dose of probiotics according to your tolerance so that it very minorly, very, very subtly flares your symptoms up, but we stay within that, that, that zone. And as you do this, as you stay in this zone, the zone will increase. So you could stay at the same dose and the symptoms you get will be less. So the, the trick here is gently increase your dose so that you stay at the same level of symptoms. And you'll, if you do this right, if you do this perfectly, which is hard, like everyone gets it wrong. I always, so I always give my one-to-one -one clients this advice and they always take way too much probiotic and they're like, I feel like I'm dying. This is really bad. And I'm like, I know everyone does it. Like the only way you find the upper limit of your tolerance is by hitting it. That's the only way you know, and everyone does it. So inevitably you're going to do it. Everyone does it. It's okay. But the, like that's fine that's the process but what's important is that you stop doing it after you know where the limit is stop doing it it doesn't help so that's that's the difference between someone that's doing it and they're going to heal and someone that's just in it in this for the suffering you know when you get to that when you hit that wall use that as a as a as a helpful beneficial healing experience of learning where your limit is and dial it back 
and just sit just behind that. And if you stay there for two, so it's different for everyone. Sometimes it's four or five days. For some people it's two weeks. For some people it's two months. You know, it take, it's different for everyone and there's no way I could really say, but sit behind that zone. When you feel brave enough, when you feel like you might be able to tolerate high dose, try a little bit higher. If you hit that wall again and you feel really bad, dial it back and be patient. This can take time. It took me like three years, two or three years to get to an effective dose of probiotic. You know, this is a marathon, not a sprint. And if you force it, you just slow yourself down. I was doing a lot of forcing back then because I didn't know this. Please don't force it. It really doesn't help. So what's going to happen is we're going to start to shift the microbiome. You've got, this is your current microbiome. These are the probiotics that we add. As this ratio begins to change, you're going to reach a tipping point and then everything starts to change from here. And, and after this point here, when you start taking probiotics, you actually feel better instead of worse. You actually don't get that negative. You don't get those, those, those disease symptoms. And, and after that threshold, once you've crossed it, you're going to start to see that your chronic disease symptoms, they don't really exist anymore. Like that arthritis that you used to get is gone. The food sensitivities, they're gone. Histamine intolerance, gone. That like chronic lingering anxiety or depression that doesn't seem to be connected to anything that's actually happening like emotionally or cognitively or work stress, gone. And that's because you've, you've moved what was causing that in the gut, you've moved it out or you've moved it. I mean, to be honest, you never, move it out like you never like get rid of it completely that's that's quite rare like that looking at it from like a we need to kill it and starve it and just remove like it doesn't work like that it's more that it's out of balance and when we put the correct microflora back in there we rebalance it and then your gut is strong you have a strong integrity so that the 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 bugs don't and the, the toxins and the things they're not leaking into your body they're not causing all these problems and they go away and you don't have to have a chronic disease anymore and it's like wow i did it i can heal and I've done this with several of my symptoms. I've seen hundreds of people do it as well. You can fix the problems that, that, that you're experiencing. You, you can. I think it's really harsh in the in a mainstream medicine system. You're kind of told, oh, you just got to live with it. Like, oh, you have IBS. Oh, that sucks. Here you go. Maybe here's a fiber supplement. Here's a PPI. Like, you can manage it. Or, or something else, you know. You, you can do something about it. Even in the alternative medicine space, the like the suffer to heal, I don't like that model as well. That's also slower, it's also painful. Like you don't have to do it like that. But if you follow people that say you have to do it like that, if they say like, oh, if you're herxing and you've got this crazy raging headache and you feel sick and you can't eat and you've got diarrhea, like you're doing good. It's like, no, you're you're actually not. Stay in your Goldilocks zone. Stay in your zone of tolerance. The more of you cultivate more of what you are, not what you want. So if you can embody what a healed state looks like, and I know how that sounds like, for context, I was disabled. I was on disability benefits. I was very ill. So I, I know that there'll be people like watching and saying, oh, but like, how can I embody like health? Like I'm, I'm really ill. Like I get it. Okay. I get it. Like nobody gets it better than me. Do it, do whatever you can within your current ability, whatever that looks like. Embody health as much as you can. Don't do the thing where you're sacrificing today for tomorrow. It, it actually doesn't work like that. You're just going to keep yourself more sick. So stay within your zone, sprinkle that compassion all over it. You know, it's really, really important. Work with yourself instead of against yourself. I know it doesn't feel like it, but your body is actually a part of you. I know when you have a really severe chronic health problem, it feels like you're fighting your body. But I'm telling you, if you fight your body, it's going to fight back. Like you're fighting a part of yourself and you can't win if you fight yourself. It, it doesn't make sense. So stop fighting yourself and try to work with yourself. Try to figure out how you can do it gently. Try to figure out how you can do it softly. Try and figure out how you can do it patiently and compassionately. And when you do like everything will, will change. Stay in that zone of tolerance and shift that microbiome. So you've got dysbiosis that's causing disease, healthy probiotics. Ooh. When you reach here, boop, you start to feel healthy again. You're like, oh, my chronic symptoms have gone. And then when you get to here, you're like a superman. Like you are, you're on another level because most, most people don't have these bugs. Like we have antibiotics everywhere. We have contaminated food supply. Like almost every single person I know has taken at least, and like this is me included, has taken like two or three courses of antibiotics in like the last 10 or 20 years. 
that's not normal. Like that's not a normal thing. Like the human microbiome is not used to that. So we're living in a in in a different world now. You can get a an extreme advantage, an extremely competitive advantage on almost everyone if your gut is working for you. So work on shifting that microbiome. Whatever symptoms you get when you take a probiotic, it's going to fix in the long run. And you have to be patient with it. You know, we're marathon, not a sprint. I don't want you to think, oh, look, when I take the probiotics, it makes my constipation really bad. So I'm going to take like five doses in one go and then my constipation is going to disappear. Wrong. Your constipation is going to be the worst that you've ever experienced. You need to take it slow. You need to take it steady. In the short term, it's going to make it worse. So if you're already feeling really crap, making it worse, you want to do it as much as you're able to, but within your tolerance, you know, don't like blast all the way to the extreme. Healing's in the middle. So do it gently. And in the long run, as this shift happens day after day, after day, after day, after day, and you'll be looking back, oh, three months have passed. Look at this tremendous progress that I've made. This same dose that used to flare me up and give me a, a horrendous flare up, I can now take without any negative symptoms whatsoever. And my actual therapeutic dose is four or five times higher than that. You can do it. And this might be really small at first, but you just have to be gentle. You just have to, you don't get to control how fast you do this process. You you really, you really don't get to control that. You just have to do what you can and be consistent, be patient and just, just work through it very, very, very slowly. So that's the general rule of thumb for you. Whatever probiotics make worse, they fix in the long run. Hopefully you understand how they do that now through this shift in the, in the microbiome. But this isn't something I want you to just blast your way through. You need to be patient. You need to do this like it's a marathon and not a sprint. I really hope this has been really helpful. If you have any questions, please do leave me a comment. I'll get back to every single person, but do make sure you tag me. Otherwise, I don't get a notification. So if you have any questions, let me know. I hope it's been helpful. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.